Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, so let's talk about the tape. So the indexes really uh, didn't tell the story today. Uh, if you look at the final scoreboard, uh, pretty much flat across the board. The Dow fractional loss, uh, the S&P, and the Nasdaq fractional gains. Uh, again, nothing really has been decided from... Uh, the macro point of view, just the way it hasn't been decided in a very, very long time. Again, the bulls are there saying we'll never go down. The bears are saying, you know, we should be going down. And somewhere in the middle is the true kind of uh, nature of the market. And the most important part of it is it's your job to figure out um, your place in it and how to take advantage. Um, I, I, I think a, a lot of traders, and it was a, kind of a weird day. First of all, uh, from the good part, right? From the good part, uh, there was not, not necessarily a bad part, but kind of, I, I want to show the good part at least. Uh, again, Amazon continues to be a rock star, right? I mean, at, at one point we saw continuously, right? If you guys remember, it all started out very innocently uh, a couple of days back uh, off, this, uh, off this 2060 level, and we've been talking about nonstop every single day, uh, 2,200, 2,300, 2,400, 2,700 calls. Uh, we even saw a June 3,000 call. And again, this, this still potentially, if the market doesn't crap out, potentially could go on a, a still a parabolic uh, move. So congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught that. It was a weird, weird day, okay? And not in a bad, weird way or good, weird way. It's just weird. It, it, it was almost to the point that you had to make some tough decisions. So for example, if you are an owner of a restaurant, right? If you are uh, or even starting a restaurant, there's a lot of things you have to take into uh, consideration. Number one, where's the location, right? Location, 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 very, very important. Uh, the decoration, very important. The type of cuisine you are serving, very, very important. The prices will either make you or break you, the coolness factor, all that good stuff, right? When you're a professional trader, you, you have to make decisions after decisions and the decisions and sometimes the decisions that you are forced to make are not necessarily benefiting you for today but is going to set a foundation for your trading for the future so for example i make a lot of hard choices every single day right um when i look at a setup i say well let me compare daily to the 60 minute vice versa where does the stock where has the stock come from? Where is this potential? Is it too stretched out? Can I can can I see more upside or downside depending on the market that I'm trading in? And how much risk to reward do I really need to expect before I put on the trade? These are a lot of these are a lot of decisions every single trader, no matter what you're trading, you're faced with every single day. However, the biggest decision, right? The biggest decision a trader can make is the art of understanding and identifying patience. What do I mean by that, right? Everybody uses the word patience, right? You hear it all the time. Well, patience, patience, you know, patience, you know, plan your trade, trade your plan, you know, wait for the setup. And again, that's great, right? That's fantastic. Um, and it all makes sense. But a lot of traders will sit there, especially when you're new, because you, you don't know what you're looking for. You don't understand exactly what you're patient for. Um, and you have to make decisions. And the problem with making decisions when you are brand new and you're using the word patience, but not really fully understanding exactly what you're waiting for, subconsciously you're putting yourself in a tremendous, tremendous um, ring of fire without even knowing this. And the longer you are trading, right? The longer you are trading, it makes decisions making a lot easier. So for example, 20 years plus, it's almost gonna be 21 years uh, very, very soon. I wake up in the morning, I have a plan, right? I have a plan from the night before, you usually hear about it on the nightly video. Um, I have an opinion, I have a sentiment, and I just wait for confirmation. And it's okay sometimes that I'll let the day go by. Again, it doesn't happen all the time, but I'll, once in a while, if I don't see the value I like, I kind of leave it alone because I always know there'll be a better value play the next day. So today was kind of an odd day, right? Um, I had 
I had a good plan coming into today. Obviously, Amazon and any type of weakness, check, check. Uh, Tesla, I was waiting for a channel, still waiting for that channel, check, check. And then I liked stocks, for example, when I came in today, I said, well, you know, last night we were talking about Apple and I wound up watching Apple, you know, trade, not really the area that I wanted. Last night I was watching for the, you know, we talked about this briefly, this morning uh, morning strategy. I, I like the 322 level, 323 and a half, 324, not so much. I had an opportunity this morning to say, well, I kind of like this Roku. I like the kind of this pivot. Do I really want to chase Roku up six, seven dollars? Again, made a choice, didn't trade it. Uh, Nvidia, again, big, big run two days ago, big, big run yesterday. The stock, again, here was the pivot in the morning. And I said to myself, well, do I really want to chase uh, Nvidia after an, a 20 point move up another $5? So I had the opportunity today, right? I had the opportunity today and I kind of said to myself, you know what? The risk parameters versus the overall reward, I, I can't live with that, right? I can't live with that. And again, yada, 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 the pivots worked. I didn't take those pivots because again, I wanted to make sure that I was safe. I always lead uh, with my shield. I don't leave my chin. It's always about risk first, right? Risk first, mentality first, protection of capital first, and then see what we get, okay? so. I kind of let my window today in the morning dry up, right? I saw it kind of closed and I, I, I sat there and I sat there this morning. I said to myself, well, what can I do? Like, what can I do now? And if this was me 15 years ago, 18 years ago, I would have been, you know, looking to see where's the next one? You know, what's the next one? Where's the next one? I have to trade, I have to trade, I have to trade. The problem is when you have to trade, it's an emotional decision, okay? You wanna trade, but remember, you don't have to trade. You wanna trade, but you don't have to trade. And the problem with that is when you're new to trading, you believe, again, because the social media tells you every single day, and Jim Cramer and all these uh, different uh, sources of outlets of news, they'll tell you there's always an opportunity somewhere, and again, in a rabid bull market, they're probably right. The problem is you are going to be putting yourself uh, in a very vulnerable state because again, a lot of the opportunity, for example, happened weeks ago, okay? And it's all part of a continuation cycle. So for example, it's a lot easier, and again, this is a pivot we took a couple of days ago that started out the whole thing. It's a lot easier to digest a 2060 break on Amazon than a 2160 break on Amazon because again, you're buying continuation, you're not buying the true nature of a confirmation channel. So you make these decisions every single day. And I kind of sat today and I start, I watched a few things go up, go down. I traded some beyond. I traded uh, Billy on a bounce, uh, made some money on beyond, made, lost a little bit of money on Billy, uh, yada, yada, yada. And I kind of said to myself, you know what? It's a two seven offsuit. You know, it's just, it's just not worth it. So I kind of sat there just kind of watching the market for the rest of the day. And again, if this was 15, 18, 20 years ago, I would have probably cut off my ear, um, probably cut off my ear trying to find that next opportunity. But again, you know, when I started trading at 24, 25 compared to I'm 45 right now, going to be 46 in June, it's much easier, right? It's much easier to understand the ramifications before they happen. And it's also much easier to digest that the opportunity that you usually have every single day will be there probably tomorrow, okay? If you put in the work uh, and you do the research and all that good stuff, be, be, because again, when you're a trader in any single level, you're, you're demanded, okay? The market gods demand that you put in that work every single day. So if you do so going to the next trading day, you should be okay, right? You should be okay. So I made that constant, you know, I really made that decision. And, you know, I watched the action for the rest of the day. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know where my opportunity would have been. Can you turn around and say, well, you know, you know, Facebook lost its opening range low. Okay. Okay. And it went down 50 cents from its opening range low and rallied back again and yada, yada, yada. Was there an opportunity in Tesla? There will be, right? There will be. We started talking about this afternoon, but it wasn't today, right? It wasn't today. You know, are you going to buy Amazon up 130 points for a new entry? Probably not in a linear market that's demonstrating over and over again that it is tired, it's still very strong, but it is tired. So you have to make some sort of hard choices. 
And being a professional trader is understanding that the same way a restaurant owner understands this, certain days they're going to be slower, right? Mondays and Tuesdays are probably gonna be slower in any type of restaurant than it is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or even Sunday. So it's very, very important to put on your big boy, big girl pants, your adult, right? Your adult thinking cap, and just think of what is my worst case scenario, right? Is a flat day, a boring day, a lethargic day, a day that did not capitalize because my window closed, is that day really necessary that I need to prove to myself I can still click a mouse in the right direction and be proven right? Or are you patient enough? Again, that's the word, that's the key word. Are you patient enough? It doesn't make a difference if you're trading one day, one week, 10 years, or 100 years, or anything in between. Are you patient enough, adult enough, to realize that, again, you are holding a 2-7 offsuit, right? You are. You are holding a 2-7 offsuit. Are you able to muck it and wait for the next hand? And that's the most important part. A lot of traders, when you are getting older in age, you hit your 30s, and I know that's crazy, right? Especially, you know, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, and your 60s, you went through life's experiences, okay? Some good, some bad. Okay, so you're more seasoned as a human being. That is also going to reflect in your trading because again, you understand the ramifications of dealing with life the wrong way, but especially dealing with finances the wrong way. And again, as we say all the time, the market will not give you a mulligan. It's not gonna give you a do-over. It will take your money, give it to somebody else, and again, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat if you continue to act accordingly. So, you know, for me, it was a very unaffordable, unfulfilled day unfulfilled day but you know what that's the discipline okay uh that's the discipline um it's very important to me to keep the the windows and the doors open right if you're in the restaurant and wait for wednesday thursday and friday and saturday because again that's where the volume of your business is going to come today just like any other day win lose a draw you move it to the side you ask yourself a question did i do everything possible to maximize the trading day and sometimes that's the easiest way to see it even if you are patient and kind of let the, the day go by so you know going into tomorrow well first of all let me, let me show you guys some pivots that you know that's some pivots that actually uh you know 2150s we're talking about uh amazon pre-market amazon is a monster it's still i still like the macro view when all the way up to the 2180s uh now never got up to uh 347 netflix i just missed this is kind of what I mean by my window kind of closed. I missed it. It was so thin. I, I just missed it. I just missed it. I couldn't, you know, it was just so fast and so thin that I just missed the trade. So, you know, we talked about 375, uh, 376, and um, it ran, excuse me, right here, 375, 376, and it ran for like 378 and change. I just missed it. I just missed it. And again, this is what I meant by not chasing, you know, not chasing, uh, you know, not chasing rainbows, right? Just, then you know, I missed it. Okay, window closed, uh, Apple, you know, I liked Apple at 322. I didn't love Apple at 323.50. It went pre-market, didn't even give you a chance. Uh, I went to like 20, a little under 24. Uh, I made some money in BYND. Uh, we actually bought it off that uh, opening range of, uh, what was it, 20, 22.50, right? 22.50, uh, got up to like 23 and change, never confirmed even if you were looking for that 23 pivot, made a little bit of money there, blah, 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 nothing. Right, so I made some money there, and you know, and lost some money on a Billy, which I kind of screwed up, and I understand why. Um, I didn't give it enough rubber band effect. I only lost like 16, 17 cents in the, 16, 17 cents in the trade, so it wasn't the point of the money. I just kind of mistraded it, and it actually went up uh, 60, 70 cents. So I kind of screwed it up. Uh, shop, you know, not a big move at all. And again, this is kind of the point of very little, at least limited value for me. Um, you know, not a lot of value. 97 went to. Uh, a little bit over, a little under 500, so nothing really there. Pets never made it. Uh, you know, here's the level, and here's and here's where we say technical analysis is not random. Uh, 758 aggressive level. If it builds below, can flush. Look at the low of the day. It stopped right at 758, right? Stopped right at 758. But there is an upside pivot, and we will discuss this tomorrow. Uh, actually, we're going to discuss it for the rest of the week. We again, we started seeing towards the end of the day. Uh, 850, 900 call buyers uh, all over the place. So the buyers are making bets. So we'll talk about that for for, net, for another day tomorrow. So again, you know, for all you guys who did take uh, Netflix, you know, they got a two dollar move. Uh, this is an upside pivot that never got there. 
Uh, here is uh, Amazon where I say there's some supply. And again, 100, 130 point move off the pivot from Thursday. Huge, huge move on Amazon. Uh, again, your big level coming that never confirmed. Um, and that's it. And that's it. So it was very, you know, it, again, it was, it was the prudent thing to do, right? The prudent thing to do, uh, at least for me, at least for me was kind of let the day go by, you know, re, uh, re examine my thesis of what I think is going to happen next. Again, I'm always cautiously optimistic. Again, it doesn't make a difference what the market has done. It's what the market is going to do. And when you looked at this linear view, view and again, we, we talked about now for a long, long time, um, I, I always have one eye open for a possible aggressive reversal. Again, linear, linear, linear is a magical word. And Qs are up like 50 bucks since October, which is insane, absolutely insane. So I'm always conscious of the pull. Um, and that's why, again, it's very, very hard for me to digest buying Roku up six buying NVIDIA up six after a 20 point run. So again, prudent choices, act like an adult to move on to the next day. So let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow's uh, session. Uh, some non-beta names that I kind of like. Uh, take a look at this uh, Sally May, right? Take a look at Sally May. Pretty, pretty basic looking chart here. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building you know, 11, 90, 12 bucks, maybe you could get a next move. I mean, this is actually a beautiful chart. This is like Tesla, I'd be with both hands. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. Uh, F-O-L-D looks pretty good again for all you guys who are trading uh, non-beta. If it could just get above this like um, 10, 90, 11 area, I think it, could, it, could, it can go. And look at this little one, J-M-I-A. I was watching it today. I actually tweeted out the prices this afternoon. Uh, it stopped right on the 10 day. If this J-M-I-A can just start reclaiming uh, 575, 580, you might get a hell, you might get a push above that $6 area, right? You got a lot of supply here, but you could get a push. Again, first green day in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 sessions. So uh, first, you know, first session in almost three weeks, little, almost three weeks of action. So keep an eye on that as well. So that's it, guys. Uh, again, act like an adult, be like an adult, stay in business, and God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.